Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Well, hello everybody. This clip is what the drone software calls a rocket. The H thing that you're seeing there is a landing pad that I bought. It's just a thing for the drone to target when it's going to return home. But what, what, what's happening here is the drone is going slowly up to 80 meters in the air. And I started it from in front of my house. The house is just starting to come in view. You can see me in red and Angel laying on the grass in front of me. I slowed this down. Uh, it was originally 40 seconds or something, but that didn't give time enough to, to really look at it, I guess. As you can see, I live in the middle of the jungle, forest anyway. I think I've said before, I have a fairly large property, eight and a half acres roughly, and it's heavily treed. Those trees that you can see coming in in the top that look dead, well, they're not completely dead, but they're in the process. They're pine trees. I'm not certain of the variety. I planted them in the 1970s. And they were planted in several other places on the island at the same time, and they've all done the same thing. They've just decided that they have reached their full life expectancy, I guess. And now the next I'm going to do here is going to be a still frame so that I can tell you better about what you're looking at in the photograph. This is a still shot at the very end of the little video clip that you just watched. As you can see, a house is a fair distance from the road. The road is on the left-hand side of the, of the picture. That's the ridge road that I lived on, live on. And uh, my driveway is pretty much uh, obscured also by trees. But I, I have the, quite a long driveway. And in the summertime, when the trees are all leaved out, you can't see my house from the, from the road. Directly behind the house, you can see the three different coops that I have two with chickens and one with quail, and I'm down to one poor little quail now. And then off to the right, uh, lower right, is the greenhouse, uh, hoop house, and just above that is the roof of my cabin. So people are always asking how close is the cabin to the house. There it is, a few hundred feet from the house, I guess. Well, I think that just about explains everything that I wanted to explain from this clip. It was really fun doing rocket. Another rocket clip. This time I decided to go out and sit in a chair next to the greenhouse where my gardens are located. There will be three uh, freeze frame photographs that follows this moving video here. And I'll, di I'll discuss further what you're, what you're looking at at that time, but I'll just let this run on. I just want to say, in case somebody is thinking, oh, I'd like him to do a different one, closer up, and all that sort of thing, these clips are probably the only clips I will ever do on my property. It just isn't a safe place to uh, fly the drone. Far too many trees, it should be in an open area, but I took a risk and did these two because I know people want to see things from the air of where I live here in the jungle. Well, as I said, I will comment further on the uh, clips that follow the, the still, still photos taken from the video. This is Angel and I sitting next to the uh, greenhouse and between us and the greenhouse that greenery is squash plants and then if you see the round landing pad just above the landing pad that's more squash plants. There's a bench uh, which is practically covered with greenery 
off to the left there, and that is where I'm growing all of those tree seedlings that I started earlier this spring. This one is from a little higher up. I guess you can still be, see me with my red shirt. That shows the roof of the cabin. And the sort of greenish-white square that you see close to the cabin, that's that screened-in cage that I'm growing my brassicas in. Uh, the sort of a purpley-brown area, sort of semi-round at the bottom right-hand corner, that's a purple nine-bark uh, bush, very large now. Just above it, you can see a, a uh, raised bed with some green in it. First raised bed I ever built, I've never been happy with it. It's too wide, uh, five or six feet wide. You just can't reach into it and, and weed without actually getting in the thing. But now I'm growing it full of berries. It has uh, raspberries, gooseberries, and strawberries in it so far. And that seems to work out quite well. To the left of that purple nine bark bush, you can make out faintly two raised beds. And that's where I'm growing my carrots and my turnips now. It had peas and then when the peas finished, I put my turnips in. It's hard to see the other beds. They, they're uh, Ruth Stout beds and they sort of blend in with the greenery, but there are squash in that area as well as in the area up by the uh, brassica cage. And this last still is from the altitude, highest altitude, 80 meters up again. But you can see my house and part of my driveway and where my truck is parked. And you can clearly make out where the greenhouse and the cabin and whatever are. It gives you a better idea, I think, of an overview of where everything is located. Well, I will now go see what else I can find around the island to add to this video. Well, what you're looking there is Friar's Head. It's called Friar's Head because of that pinnacle of rock that's standing out in front of it. Sort of resembles an old friar with his head bowed. And the next few clips were taken sort of that flat area up above on the top of the headland. There's an observation deck there and I've, two different days I've done some clips up there. One day there was some light fog, and the next day, well, today actually, uh, was much better. It was uh, a clear, sunny day. So hopefully I'll be able to explain the clips for you as we go on here. This is just a picture that I took with my iPhone from the beach. All of the clips that follow were done at low tide, both days. Well, I'm up on the observation deck at Friar's Head. That's one of those salmon farms again. I'm trying to show you the old friar here. That's the observation deck up above. That, if you can see that sort of pinnacle of rock in the center there, looking directly down on top of it, it doesn't look as tall as it is. But as you can see from my previous photograph of taken from the beach, looking across at it, it, it does sort of look like a friar standing there. There's a legend that goes around here, I don't know how true it is, that there were two of them, and that the British knocked one down using it for cannon practice sometime in the 1700s. Whether or not that's true or not, I don't know. It uh, wasn't exactly thick fog. You, you, when this little clip began, you could see across the water to Eastport, Maine, that it had been foggy all day, and it was just sort of drifting in and out can only fly the drone if you can see it at all times. It has to be visible at all times to the person who's flying it. That's part of the regulation. So I was able to do that. The fog wasn't that thick. Occasionally some would drift in front of it, but I could still make out the drone. The head as you can, is called the head because it's sort of a headland. As you can see, it has water on both sides of it and a wonderful view from the observation deck. That's it down there in the center. The drone is on its slow return now, coming in for a landing. Gives me a chance to just give you a brief 
description of what's going to follow. I'm not going to talk through it. It's a thing called Asteroid. It's one of the pre-programmed things that the drone will do. It takes it several minutes to do it, and when it finishes, it's only a few seconds long. But I've slowed it down so that it's I have like half a minute long. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> uh, I didn't time how long it takes the drone to do that, but several minutes. It flies up to its ultimate height. You can only the legal height for flying it is 120 meters, 400 feet, and it flies up there and announces that it has reached its maximum altitude. And then it spends several minutes taking clips. You can watch it on the on the iPhone, and it's really strange. It's uh, all directions the camera is going and then it puts it all together into that little thing and, and the original clip that it produced was a, a little over eight seconds long and I slowed it down to this little over half a minute in length but uh, it's quite remarkable why I'm showing you this this is a still frame taken from that asteroid shot you can see the observation deck there and in front of the observation deck at the edge of the water you see that lighter stone standing up that gives you a better idea of what the old friar looks like from from that angle so that's my main reason for showing you this little still shot and you can also see some of the fog over the trees there i went back the next day beautiful sunshine and no fog and did the uh, same thing the asteroid shot again what follows here is the original asteroid shot uh, at its original speed. I didn't slow it down. And then the second one that I did, the difference being that I used the old fryer as the focal point on the second one. So hopefully you get a little better view of the old fryer. And I'm also just putting it there uh, at its uh, original speed. So it's less than 10 seconds long. that last clip in there even though I didn't know until I got home and looked at it it hardly had the old fryer in it at all but anyway it's another one of those interesting asteroid shots I've moved on now to Liberty Point and what you're looking at I think it's in the Roosevelt Park and what you're looking at I think the park calls this a sugarloaf rock or something like that but all of the young people here call it the frog rock and can you see why I got some more clips coming here. Well, I won't talk all the way through this. This is a circular flight around what I think is really better named the Frog Rock as well, for obvious reasons. Enjoy the flight. This is just a bit of footage that I took, nothing fancy. 
none of the tricks that the camera will do. There are two observation decks at Liberty Point. I think before you the, this clip ends, you eventually see both of them. It's a wonderful place to go on a hot day. It's almost always 10 degrees Celsius, at least 10 degrees Celsius cooler than anywhere else on the island. Once again, these clips are taken at low tide. A lot of these rocks would be almost completely covered with water at high tide. It's a spectacular place to go during a windstorm. The surf and whatever out there is incredible. But couldn't take any drone footage. It would blow the drone away, you'd never see it again. That's looking down on the second observation deck. I'll just let this little clip finish. Flies you over part of the forest. Uh, a good friend of mine who is no longer with us died quite a few years ago, Dr. Radcliffe Pike. He was a botanist from the U.S. side of the border. He was professor of botany at the University of New Hampshire. Most of this forest is uh, black spruce and the size of the trees can be very deceiving. They can be hundreds of years old and the tree isn't, doesn't look all that big. They're very slow growing. But what I was going to say, Rad called this area of the island the fog forest because a lot of those trees are hung with a green moss. Well, thank you very much for watching. The drone is coming in for a landing now, and that will give me a chance to explain what follows. It is yet another one of those asteroid clips uh, done from out here at Liberty Point. Now, I put it up twice. Once is the original clip, which is a little over eight seconds long, and then I slowed it down so you can have a better look at it. But I won't talk through it, so this will end my yakking at you. Thank you very much for watching.